Picnic basket, check. Sunscreen, check. Trashy novel, check. Now, where to park yourself for a summer day at the park? Well, there's Ernest's or Griffith's place. Or Siley's, or Virginia's. There's Jack's in Long Beach, or Jackie's in Pasadena. We don't often wonder about the names of the places where we disport ourselves. But how did some parks get named for some people? The heroes and pioneers you know already. Throughout the city and county of Los Angeles, parks are named for Jesse Owens and Cesar Chavez, George Washington Carver, and Richie Valens, Mary McLeod Baytoon and Jackie Robinson, along with dimly recalled politicians and developers. Let's take a skip around some of Los Angeles city and county parks, shall we? Begin with the biggest. If not for Griffith Parks for 200 plus acres, L. A. His ranking among cities' parklands would be far more dismal than it is already. It was not, as some believe, named for D.W. Griffith, the silent film director who created much of the vocabulary of film, as well as the often offensive birth of a nation. No. It was named for the man who gave it to L. A. The Welsh immigrant and mining magnate Colonel Griffith Jenkins Griffith. Griffith was one of those self-mythologizing frontier characters, a self-promoter of choleric temper and roller coaster fortunes. The Colonel title itself is of murky origin, perhaps from some brief spell with the California National Guard. An acquaintance called him a midget egomaniac. In the 1880s he bought up Rancho Los Feliz land with an eye to profits, but there were no buyers, the rumor of a curse still clung to the land. So at Christmas 1896 he presented the city with thousands of acres, along with the pious sentiment that would wind up on his statue in Griffith Park. Public parks are a safety valve of great cities, and should be accessible and attractive, where neither race, creed nor color should be excluded. The pioneer and publisher Horace Bell, who loved to deflate Griffith's pomposity in print, made it clear he thought the gift was merely a tax dodge. Still, the city took it. But in 1903, Griffith badly blotted his copybook. He and his wife, Christina, a landowning, Catholic descendant of the founding Verdugo family, were staying in the presidential suite at the Bandini Hotel in Santa Monica when the very sozzled Griffith, in a fury of what the sentencing judge would call revolting, gross, unmanly and degrading behavior, 